In this video, we are going to talk about piecewise functions. Piecewise functions are functions that are defined in more than one part or more than one pieces, hence the word piecewise functions. And so we're going to look at, first of all, how do you evaluate piecewise functions? And then second of all, how do you graph piecewise functions? So let's look at some examples. For example one, we want to evaluate this piecewise function defined by x, f of x equal negative x minus 1 for x less than negative 1 f of x equal negative 3 for x between negative 1 and 2, and f of x equal to the square root of x minus 2 for x greater than 2. So this is a piecewise function defined in three different pieces. And we want to evaluate this function at f of negative 3, f of negative 1, f of 2, and f of 6. So this is four different parts to this one problem. So we're going to start first of all with f of negative 3. So remember, recall that a function has one output for each input. So when I plug in a number, I should only get one value. So what that tells me is that I don't want to plug in negative 3 into all of these functions. That means negative 3 can only go into one of these functions. And I need to figure out which one does it go into. So I determine which one it goes into by these restrictions over here for each function. So this one says I want to use this function when x is less than negative 1. I want to use this function when x is between negative 1 and 2. And I want to use this function when x is bigger than 2. So where does negative 3 fit? Negative 3 fits here. It's less than negative 1. So since negative 3 fits in this category, this is the function I want to use, negative x minus 1. So wherever there is an x in that function, I'll replace it with a negative 3. So it was negative x minus 1, but now I have negative negative 3 minus 1. Two negatives become a positive. 3 minus 1 is 2. And so f of negative 3 is equal to 2. And you do the same thing with each of these. So for part B, we want to know what is f of negative 1. Well, where does negative 1 fit? Well, this says that x is strictly less than negative 1. But this one says x is greater than or equal to negative 1. So negative 1 would actually be included in this second one. And for this second function, it says f of x equal negative 3. There is no x to plug in a number. So you would just get negative 3 out. That's considered a constant function. So f of negative 1 would be equal to negative 3. What about f of 2? Well, you need to figure out where does 2 fit over here in these restrictions. Well, this one has a 2 in it, but this one says that x is strictly less than 2. This one has a, oh, this should be a line underneath. I missed that, sorry. Because if this one didn't have a line underneath, then 2 would fit nowhere over here, and 2 wouldn't be in the domain, but I actually just forgot to put the line underneath. So 2 would actually fit in this one. x is greater than or equal to 2. And so you will plug in 2 here, wherever there's an x, replace it with the 2. 2 minus 2 is 0. The square root of 0 is 0. So f of 2 will be equal to 0. And then for the last one, part d, f of 6. 6 also fits in this category because 6 is bigger than 2. So wherever there's an x, replace it with the 6. You get 6 minus 2, which is 4. The square root of 4 is 2. So f of 6 will be equal to 2. And so that is how you evaluate piecewise functions. You have to figure out where does that x value fit and where the, depending on where it fits, that depends on which function you actually plug the number into. For example two, we want to graph a piecewise function. And so when you graph a piecewise function, you want to graph each function where it's defined on the x or the domain and you want to put those two functions together. So basically you want to graph each piece separately but on the same graph. So we'll start with the first function here. So this is our piecewise function is f of x equal negative 3x for all the x less than 1 and f of x equal negative 3 for all the x greater than or equal to 1. So we have two separate functions. The very first one is y equal to negative 3x. So remember f of x and y are interchangeable. So we want to plug in x and y values to actually get um, points that go on the graph. And so I'll pick my x and y values based on how x is defined. So this says x is less than 1. So I want to pick values of x that are less than 1. So like negative 2, negative 1, 0. And then I'll also pick it, plug in 1 to see where what's actually happening at 1 because that's where my graph will stop. And I'm going to put a little star right here just to remind myself that 1 is actually not included on this graph. So whenever I plot that point, it'll be an open circle and not a closed circle. So if I plug in negative 2, I get negative 3 times negative 2, which is positive 6. If I plug in negative 1, I get 3. If I plug in 0, negative 3 times 0, that's 0. If 
I plug in 1, I get negative 3. And so I will plot those points on this graph, negative 2, positive 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So that's the point negative 2, 6, negative 1, 3, which will be here, 0, 0, which is here, and then 1, negative 3. And remember, this star reminds me that it's not included. So instead of putting a closed circle, I will put an open circle there. And this graph is a line, so I have a line that goes on in this direction. So that's my first graph. My second graph is the graph y equal to negative 3. Now this is a constant function. There's no where to plug in an x. But this says to pick x's that are bigger than 1. So I will pick 1, 2, 3, 4, and I could pick any other numbers bigger than 1. But since this is a constant function, then no matter what I plug in, my answer will come out to be negative 3, which that's the graph of a horizontal line. So 1, negative 3, 2, negative 3, 3, negative 3, 4, negative 3, and so forth. And so that's a horizontal line on in that direction. And so these two graphs, and it's a little crooked, but just imagine that's a straight horizontal line. But these two graphs put together makes up the graph of this piecewise function. And so that is how this piecewise function will look. You take each piece, you graph it separately, you plug in numbers defined by your restrictions, whatever restrictions are placed on that function. So this is how you would graph that function. Okay, I want you to pause the video for a moment and I want you to see if you could graph this piecewise function right here. So pause it and see if you can graph it and let's see what you get. Okay, so you have two different functions here. The first one is y equal to x plus 3. So you'll make a t-chart for that one with x and y values. And then your second function is y equal to x squared. So you'll also make a t-chart for that function as well. So for the first one, it says that x is less than negative 1. So you want to pick values of x that are less than negative 1, such as negative 4, negative 3, negative 2. And again, since that graph stops at negative 1, I want to plug in negative 1 so I can see where it stops. I'm going to put a little star here to note that negative 1 is not included, so it'll be an open circle there. So when you plug in negative 4, negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. When you plug in negative 3, you get 0, 1, and 2. And so those are your points for that graph. So you'll plot those points, negative 4, negative 1, negative 3, 0, negative 2, 1, and negative 1, 2. And again, since that's not included, you will have a... Um, you will have a open circle there. And so your graph would go like this. So you have a line going in that direction. And that's where the graph that graph stops. For y equal to x squared, you only want numbers between negative 1 and 2. So negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. Negative 1 is included on this graph, but 2 is not included on this graph. So I'll put a little star here to remind myself that when I plot 2, it's going to be an open circle there. So negative 1 squared is 1, 0 squared is 0, 1 squared is 1, and 2 squared is 4 because whatever I plug in, I'm squaring it. And so plot those points, negative 1, 1, 0, 0, 1, 1, and 2, 4. But remember, it's not on the graph, so it'll be an open circle there. This is actually the squaring function, one of our parent functions. So we know it's a parabola, and also the highest exponent is 2. So it makes a parabola, and so you get a parabola on that part of the graph. And so this is the graph of your piecewise function. These two graphs put together make one graph defined by this. And so hopefully that's what you've got. If not, go back and see where you messed up at. If you have any questions whatsoever about piecewise functions, make sure you put them in the comments below. And then if you haven't already, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you can get more math-related content and if you hit the bell you'll get notifications whenever i upload new videos so thank you for watching